and so finally to another 48 hours. And if you're expecting this to be anything like as good as the original 48 hours, or even just a little bit better than blue heat, forget it. Just to remind you, in 48 Hours, a splendid thriller, cop Nick Nolte gets wise-cracking crook Eddie Murphy out of jail to help him solve a crime. So what's changed since then? Well, not the plot, really. That's pretty much the same. It's in more subtle ways that another 48 Hours is different. For example, this is an Eddie Murphy production as well as a Paramount production, so it may not be entirely a coincidence that this time round Eddie Murphy gets bigger billing than Nick Nolte. And perhaps it's also a sign of relative prosperity that where before Nolte was fat and Murphy was slim, Nolte now has a lean and hungry look, while Murphy is distinctly on the plump side. But if you overlook such details, you'll find yourself back in familiar territory, as Nolte gets Murphy out of prison, yes again, to help him nab a big bad drugs baron. That's where we live. So, as you can see, Nolte and Murphy start off by bickering and snarling at each other, yes again, and then just as before, gradually develop a grudging affection. Nolte growls a lot, Murphy cracks wise, and there's a great deal of violence. It's a tired sort of story with a tired sort of script, and that normally fine director, Walter Hill, just seems to let it happen. He does stir himself a bit for the action sequences, but otherwise it looks as if he was simply jogging on the spot. <laughs> on reflection, perhaps one shouldn't judge Walter Hill too harshly. This, after all, is a film on which seven different people had various kinds of producer credit. That means seven different people putting in their two penneth seven different sets of fingers in the pie, seven different slices of bread dipped in the gravy. Even the best of directors, finding himself so heavily outnumbered by men in suits, might feel there's no sense in going against odds like that. 